Demi Jean Moore, born November 11, 1962, is an American actress and film producer. She has been credited as an influential figure in the movement for equal salary for women in Hollywood, and was one of the highest paid actresses through the 1980s and 1990s. Her accolades include nominations for a Critics' Choice Movie Award, two Golden Globe Awards, a Primetime Emmy Award and a Screen Actors Guild Award. She is recognized as a sex symbol for her looks and media image. After making her film debut in 1981, Moore appeared on the soap opera General Hospital, 1982-1984, and subsequently gained recognition as a member of the Brat Pack with roles in Blame It on Rio, St. Elmo's Fire, and About Last Night. She had her breakthrough for her starring role in Ghost, the highest-grossing film of that year, her performance was praised, and earned her a Golden Globe nomination. She had further box office success in the early 1990s, with the films A Few Good Men, Indecent Proposal, and Disclosure. In 1996, Moore became the highest-paid actress in film history when she received an unprecedented $12.5 million to star in striptease. She had starring roles in the films The Scarlet Letter, The Juror and G.I. Jane, all of which were commercially unsuccessful and contributed to a downturn in her career. Her career has since had a resurgence with supporting roles in such films as The Hunchback of Notre Dame, The Hunchback of Notre Dame 2, Charlie's Angels, Full Throttle, Bobby, Mr. Brooks, Margin Call, and Rough Night. In 2019, she released a memoir titled Inside Out, which became a New York Times bestseller. Moore has been married three times, to the musician Freddie Moore and the actors Bruce Willis and Ashton Kutcher. She has three children with Willis. Early life. Childhood and family. Moore was born November 11, 1962, in Roswell, New Mexico. Her biological father, Air Force Airman Charles Harmon Sr., left her mother, Virginia, nay King, after a two-month marriage before Moore was born. When Moore was three months old, her mother married Dan Gines, a newspaper advertising salesman who frequently changed jobs, and then they had Moore's half-brother Morgan. As a result, the family moved many times. Moore said in 1991, my dad was Dan Gines. He raised me. There is a man who would be considered my biological father who I don't really have a relationship with. Moore has half-siblings from Charlie Harmon's other marriages, but she doesn't keep in touch with them either. Moore's stepfather Dan Gines died by suicide in October 1980 at age 37, two years after he separated from Moore's mother. Her biological father Charlie Harmon died in 1997 after a battle with cancer. Moore's mother had a long arrest record which included drunk driving and arson. Moore broke off contact with her in 1990, when Mrs. Gines walked away from a rehab stay Moore had paid for at the Hazelden Foundation in Minnesota. Gines posed nude for the magazine High Society in 1993, where she spoofed Moore's Vanity Fair pregnancy and body paint covers and parodied her love scene from the film Ghost. Moore and Gines briefly reconciled shortly before Gines died of cancer in July 1998 at age 54. Moore spent her early childhood in New Mexico, and later, Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania. She suffered from strabismus as a child, which was ultimately corrected by two operations. Moore also suffered from kidney dysfunction. Moore learned of her biological father, Harmon, at age 13 when she found her mother and stepfather's marriage certificate and inquired about the circumstances since she saw my parents were married in February 1963. I was born in 1962. Dot. Education. At age 14, Moore returned to her hometown of Roswell and lived with her grandmother for six months before relocating to Washington State, where her mother and siblings were residing near Seattle. Several months later, the family moved again to West Hollywood, California, where Moore's mother took a job working for a magazine distribution company. Moore attended Fairfax High School there, and recalled, I moved out of my family's house when I was 16 and left high school in my junior year. In 2019, she stated she was raped at 15 by a man. The man claimed he had paid Moore's mother to get access to Moore to rape her, although Moore said it is unclear if this were true. Career. 1980-1985. Early Roles and Breakthrough. Moore signed with the Elite Modeling Agency, then enrolled in drama classes after being inspired by her next-door neighbor, 17-year-old German actress Nastasia Kinski. In August 1979, at age 16, Moore met musician Freddie Moore who was married and at the time leader of the band Boy, at the Los Angeles nightclub The Troubadour. They lived in an apartment in West Hollywood. Moore co-wrote three songs with Freddie Moore and appeared in the music video for their selection, 
It's Not a Rumor, performed by his band, The New Cats. She continues to receive royalty checks from her songwriting work, 1981. Moore also sang in the films One Crazy Summer and Bobby. Moore appeared on the cover of the January 1981 issue of the adult magazine We, taken from a photo session in which she had posed nude. In a 1988 interview, Moore claimed she only posed for the cover of We. I was 16. I told them I was 18. Interviewer Alan Carter said, however, some peekaboo shots did appear inside. And later, nude shots of her turned up in Celebrity Sleuth, photos that she once said, were for a European fashion magazine. In 1990, she told another interviewer, I was 17 years old. I was underage. It was just the cover. Moore made her film debut with a brief role in the 1981 teen drama Choices, directed by Silvio Narizano. Her second film feature was the 3D sci-fi horror film Parasite, for which director Charles Band had instructed casting director Johanna Ray to find me the next Karen Allen. Moore then joined the cast of the ABC soap opera General Hospital, playing the role of an investigative reporter until 1983. During her tenure on the series, she made an uncredited cameo appearance in the 1982 spoof film Young Doctors in Love. Moore's film career took off in 1984 following her appearance in the sex comedy Blame It on Rio. She also portrayed Laura Victor in the comedy film No Small Affair, opposite John Cryer. Moore's commercial breakthrough came in Joel Schumacher's yuppie drama St. Elmo's Fire, which received negative reviews, but was a box office success and brought more recognition. Because of her association with that film, Moore was often listed as part of the Brat Pack, a label she felt was demeaning. Moore progressed to more serious material with About Last Night, co-starring Rob Lowe, which marked a positive turning point in her career, as Moore noted that, following its release, she began seeing better scripts. Film critic Roger Ebert gave the film four out of four stars and praised her performance, writing, there isn't a romantic note she isn't required to play in this movie, and she plays them all flawlessly. 1986-1996, Breakthrough and Critical Success the success of About Last Night was unrivaled by Moore's other two 1986 releases, One Crazy Summer and Wisdom, the last youth-oriented films in which she would star. Moore was listed as one of 12 promising new actors of 1986 in John Willis's Screen World, Volume 38. Moore made her professional stage debut in an off-Broadway production of The Early Girl, which ran at the Circle Repertory Company in fall 1986. In 1988, Moore starred as a prophecy-bearing mother in the apocalyptic drama The Seventh Sign, her first outing as a solo film star, and in 1989, she played the quick-witted local laundress and prostitute in Neil Jordan's Depression-era allegory Where No Angels, opposite Robert De Niro. Moore's most successful film to date is the supernatural romantic melodrama Ghost, which grossed over US$505 million United States dollars at the box office and was the highest-grossing film of the year. She played a young woman in jeopardy to be protected by the ghost of her murdered lover. The love scene between Moore and Patrick Swayze that starts in front of a potter's wheel to the sound of unchained melody has become an iconic moment in cinema history. Ghost was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture, and Moore's performance earned her a Golden Globe Award nomination. In 1991 Moore starred in the horror comedy Nothing But Trouble, co-produced and appeared in the mystery thriller Mortal Thoughts, and played a blonde for the first time in the romantic comedy The Butcher's Wife, with Roger Ebert's review describing her as warm and cuddly. Moore sustained her A-list status with her starring roles in Rob Rayner's A Few Good Men, Adrian Lyne's Indecent Proposal, and Barry Levinson's Disclosure, all of which opened at number one at the box office and were blockbuster hits. By 1995 Moore was the highest-paid actress in Hollywood. Her portrayal of Hester Prynne in The Scarlet Letter, a freely adapted version of the historical romance novel by Nathaniel Hawthorne, was met with harsh criticism. The coming-of-age drama now and then found moderate box office success. Moore was paid a record-breaking salary of US$12.5 million in 1996 to star in Striptease. Much hype was made about Moore's willingness to dance topless for the part, though this was the sixth time she had shown her breasts on film. The film opened to overwhelmingly negative reviews with Moore's performance being criticized. It was a moderate financial success, grossing US$113 million United States dollars worldwide, and Moore received the Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Actress. Moore starred in the thriller The Juror. It was a box office bomb and was heavily panned by critics. 
Moore produced and starred in a controversial miniseries for HBO called If These Walls Could Talk, a three-part anthology about abortion alongside Sissy Spacek and Cher. Its screenwriter, Nancy Savoca, directed two segments, including one in which Moore played a widowed nurse in the early 1950s seeking a back-alley abortion. For that role, Moore received a second Golden Globe nomination as Best Actress. Also in 1996, she provided the speaking voice of the beautiful Esmeralda in Disney's animated adaptation of The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and starred in Mike Judge's comedy Beavis and Butthead Do America, alongside her then-husband Bruce Willis. Moore shaved her head to play the first woman to undergo training in the Navy SEALs in Ridley Scott's G.I. Jane. Budgeted at US$50 million, United States, the film was a moderate commercial success, with a worldwide gross of US$97.1 million. United States. 1997 to 2003, career downturn and other ventures. During the production of G.I. Jane, it was reported that Moore had ordered studio chiefs to charter two planes for her entourage and her, which reinforced her negative reputation for being a diva. She had previously turned down the Sandra Bullock role in While You Were Sleeping because the studio refused to meet her salary demands, and was dubbed, Gimme Moore, by the media. Moore took on the role of an ultrapious psychiatrist in Woody Allen's Deconstructing Harry, also in 1997. After G.I. Jane, Moore retreated from the spotlight and moved to Haley, Idaho, on a full-time basis to devote herself to raising her three daughters. Moore was off-screen for three years before re-emerging in the arthouse psychological drama Passion of Mind, the first English-language film from Belgian director Alain Berliner. Her performance as a woman with multiple personality disorder was well-received, but the film itself garnered mixed reviews and was deemed, naggingly slow, by some critics. Moore then resumed her self-imposed career hiatus and continued to turn down film offers. Producer Erwin Winkler said in 2001, I had a project about a year and a half ago, and we made an inquiry about her, a real good commercial picture. She wasn't interested. Dot. Moore returned to the screen playing a villain in the 2003 film Charlie's Angels, Full Throttle, opposite Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore and Lucy Liu. A commercial success, the film made US$259.1 million worldwide, and Rolling Stone, on Moore's role, remarked, it's a relief when Demi Moore shows up as Fallen Angel. Moore, 40, looks great in a bikini and doesn't even try to act. Her unsmiling sexiness cuts through the giggle fest as the angels fight, kick, dance and motocross like Indiana Jones clones on estrogen. Charlie's Angels. Full throttle was followed by yet another three-year absence. In the interim, Moore signed on as the face of the Versace fashion brand and the Helena Rubinstein brand of cosmetics. 2006-2011. Comeback and resurgence. In Emilio Estevez's drama Bobby, Moore portrayed an alcoholic singer whose career is on the downswing, as part of an ensemble cast, about the hours leading up to the Robert F. Kennedy assassination. As a member of the cast, she was nominated for the Screen Actors Guild Award for Best Cast in a Motion Picture. The film won the Hollywood Film Festival Award for Best Ensemble Cast. Moore had a lead role as a grieving and tormented novelist in the mystery thriller Half Light, then took on the role of a driven police officer investigating a serial killer in the psychological thriller Mr. Brooks, with Kevin Costner. The film received mixed reviews and grossed $48.1 million worldwide. Rolling Stone wrote that, The Cop on the Case, played by Demi Moore with a striking directness that deserved better than being saddled with an absurd backstory as an heiress with a fortune-hunting husband. Dot. Moore reunited with Blame It on Rio co-star Michael Caine for the British crime drama film Flawless, which saw her portray an American executive helping to steal a handful of diamonds from the London Diamond Corporation during the 1960s. Moore received positive reviews from critics. Miami Herald wrote, the inspired pairing of Demi Moore and Michael Caine as a pair of thieves in the Diamond Heist semi-caper movie Flawless goes a long way toward overcoming the film's slack, leisurely pacing. In 2010, Moore took on the role of a daughter helping her father deal with age-related health problems in the dramedy Happy Tears, opposite Parker Posey and Rip Torn, and starred as the matriarch of a family moving into a suburban neighborhood in the comedy The Joneses, with David Duchovny. The latter film was largely highlighted upon its theatrical release, with critics concluding that it benefits from its timely satire of consumer culture, as well as a pair of strong performances from Duchovny and Moore. In Bunraku, a film Moore described as a big action adventure, she played a courtesan in a femme fatale with a secret past. 
Moore portrayed a chief risk management officer at a large Wall Street investment bank during the initial stages of the financial crisis of 2007-08 in the critically acclaimed corporate drama Margin Call, where she was part of an ensemble cast that included Kevin Spacey, Simon Baker, and Paul Bettany. The cast garnered nominations for the Best Ensemble Award from the Gotham Awards, the Phoenix Film Critics Society and the Central Ohio Film Critics Association. Also in 2011, Moore received a Directors Guild of America Award nomination for Outstanding Directing, Miniseries or TV Film for her work as a director in a segment of the 2011 Lifetime Anthology Film 5, and starred opposite Ellen Barkin, Ellen Burstyn and George Kennedy in Sam Levinson's black comedy Another Happy Day, which premiered at the Sundance Film Festival. 2012 present, memoir and television roles. Moore appeared as the mother of Miley Cyrus' character in the romantic drama film Law. She played a similar mother role in her next film, the likewise coming-of-age dramedy Very Good Girls, which co-starred Dakota Fanning and Elizabeth Olsen. Her part as an old flame of a quick-draw killer in the western drama Forsaken, with Donald Sutherland and Kiefer Sutherland, was followed by the role of the daughter of a retired high school teacher in the road comedy Wild Oats, which premiered on Lifetime in August 2016, and in a limited release the following month. In her next film, the drama Blind, Moore starred opposite Alec Baldwin, portraying the neglected wife of an indicted businessman having an affair with a novelist blinded in a car crash. In February 2017, Moore joined the cast of Empire, in the recurring role of a take-charge nurse with a mysterious past. The comedy film Rough Night featured Moore as one half of a nymphomaniac couple seducing a member of a bachelorette party gone wrong. The film was released in the United States on June 16, 2017, by Columbia Pictures, received mixed reviews and grossed $47 million worldwide. She played Selma in the Indian drama film Love Sonia, which tells the story of a young girl's journey to rescue her sister from the dangerous world of international sex trafficking. She portrayed Lucy a superficial CEO in the comedy horror film Corporate Animals, which premiered at the Sundance Film Festival on January 29, 2019. Moore's memoir, Inside Out, was published on September 24, 2019, by HarperCollins. On October 13, 2019, the book debuted at number one on the New York Times combined print and ebook nonfiction bestsellers list and the hardcover nonfiction bestsellers list. Moore discussed the book in an exclusive interview with Diane Sawyer of ABC News on Good Morning America. Moore and her two daughters Rumor and Tallulah appeared on Jada Pinkett Smith's web television talk show Red Table Talk on November 4, 2019. On June 24, 2020, Moore joined as Piper Griffin, the matriarch of a powerful family, who will stop at nothing to protect her family and her way of life, in the pandemic-themed thriller produced by Michael Bay, Songbird, alongside Craig Robinson. Paul Walter Hauser and Peter Sormer. Moore has a leading role as Diana in Amazon's drama series, Dirty Diana, which is based on the podcast of the same name. The podcast is voiced by Moore and she also serves as producer with screenwriter Shayna Fest. Moore was among the celebrities who made cameo appearances modeling lingerie at Rihanna's Savage X Fenty Vol. 2 fashion show in 2020. Media Image, Status and Persona Moore is viewed as a pioneer for equal salary for women in Hollywood. The role in The Hunchback of Notre Dame made her the first Hollywood actress to reach a $10 million salary. She was paid $12.5 million for her role in Striptease, which was more money than any other woman in Hollywood had ever been offered at the time. Producers for Striptease and G.I. Jane got into a bidding war to see who could get Moore to film first. Striptease won and Moore became the highest paid actress in Hollywood in 1996. She became a pioneer for other actresses by being the first female lead to demand the same salary, benefits and billing as her male counterparts, Lifetime wrote. Her screen persona always has something indestructible about it. There's a toughness, a strength, a determination, The Guardian described in 2007. Moore has been included in magazine lists of the world's most beautiful women. She was selected as one of People magazine's 50 most beautiful people in the world in 1996. In 2004, People ranked her ninth on their list of all-time most beautiful women. She was voted seventh on Life & Style magazine's Best Dressed Female poll in December 2006. In 1999, she was ranked eighth on Forbes's list of top 20 actresses, based on three separate lists of box office receipts. In 1999, Moore became a guest editor for the November issue of Marie Claire. On December 31, 2019, 
The Wall Street Journal listed a cover story about Moore as one of their most read stories in 2019. Moore has 4.5 million followers on Twitter as of January 2020. She uses Twitter as a platform to raise awareness of sexual trafficking and slavery. She is practicing what she preaches. More than half of her posts are on the subject, directing followers where to get involved, Harper's Bazaar reported in August 2010. I like to connect to people in the virtual world, exchanging thoughts and ideas, when in the physical world we might never have the opportunity to cross paths, Moore told Harper's Bazaar. Moore has graced the cover of numerous international fashion magazines, including France's L, UK's Grazia, US, W, Vanity Fair, Interview, Rolling Stone, Glamour and InStyle, Australia's Harper's Bazaar and Turkey's Marie Claire. She has also appeared on the front cover of Vogue, Portugal, France and US. Moore has appeared in commercials and print ads throughout her career. She has appeared in television commercials for Keds, Oscar Mayer, Diet Coke, Lux, Jog Mate and Saibu department stores, and print ads for Versace and Ann Taylor. Vanity Fair controversy in August 1991. Moore appeared nude on the cover of Vanity Fair under the title More Demi Moore. Annie Leibovitz shot the picture while Moore was seven months pregnant with the second of her three daughters, Scout LaRue Willis, intending to portray, anti-Hollywood, anti-glitz, attitude. The cover drew a lot of attention, being discussed on television, radio, and in newspaper articles. The frankness of Leibovitz's portrayal of a pregnant sex symbol led to divided opinions, ranging from suggestions of sexual objectification to celebrations of the photograph as a symbol of empowerment. The photograph was subject to numerous parodies, including the Spy magazine version, which placed Moore's then-husband Bruce Willis's head on her body. In the parody, the model's body was attached to what is described as the guilty and smirking face of Nielsen. The teaser said, Do this march. The case was dismissed in 1996 because the parody relied for its comic effect on the contrast between the original. In November 2009, the Moroccan magazine Femmes du Maroc emulated the pose with Moroccan news reporter Nadia Largue, causing controversy in the majority Muslim nation. In August 1992, Moore again appeared nude on the cover of Vanity Fair, this time modeling for body painting artist Joanne Gare in Demi's birthday suit. In October 2019, she posed nude on the cover of Harper's Bazaar. Activism and Philanthropy Moore has supported numerous charities, including All Day Foundation, American Foundation for AIDS Research, Artists for Peace and Justice, Coalition to Abolish Slavery and Trafficking, Declare Yourself, Free the Slaves, Healthy Child Healthy World, Raising Malawi, The Art of Elysium and UNICEF. In 2010, Moore defeated Kevin Bacon to win $250,000 in the Pepsi Refresh Celebrity Challenge. She chose to support the organization GEMS, Girls Educational and Mentoring Services, a nonprofit group which aims to empower young women who have been the victims of commercial sexual exploitation and trafficking. She traveled to Haiti with the Artists for Peace and Justice following the earthquake of 2010. She has also supported Chrysalis, a nonprofit organization which offers employment opportunities to the homeless. Moore became a special contributor to the CNN Freedom Project and traveled to Nepal to meet with 2010 CNN Hero of the Year Anuradha Koirala and her organization, Mathi Nepal, which has rescued more than 12,000 stolen Nepalese children from sex trafficking since 1993. Moore was the narrator and anchor of CNN's documentary on child trafficking, called Nepal's Stolen Children, which aired on June 26, 2011. In the documentary, Moore talked to Nepal's Prime Minister, Jalanath Connell and young girls who were forced into prostitution before being saved by a Nepalese nonprofit. In 2009, Moore and Kutcher launched DNA Foundation, a nonprofit, non governmental organization directed towards fighting child sexual slavery. The foundation's first campaign included several celebrities, including Justin Timberlake, Sean Penn, Bradley Cooper appearing in a series of viral videos proclaiming, Real men don't buy girls. In November 2012, the foundation said it was announcing a new name and refined mission as Thorn, Digital Defenders of Children, which aimed to disrupt and deflate the predatory behavior of those who abuse and traffic children, solicit sex with children or create and share child pornography. Thorn, Digital Defenders of Children, assisted law enforcement in identifying 5,894 child sex trafficking victims and rescuing 103 children from situations where their sexual abuse was recorded and distributed in 2017 according to the organization's 2017 impact report. In 2018, 
Los Angeles-based nonprofit organization, Visionary Women honored Moore with its inaugural Visionary Woman Award for her work to combat human trafficking. Personal Life Marriages and Relationships On February 8, 1981, at the age of 18, Moore married singer Freddie Moore, 12 years her senior and recently divorced from his first wife, Lucy. Before their marriage, Demi began using Freddie's surname as her stage name. The pair separated in 1983, after which Demi had a relationship with Timothy Hutton. She filed for divorce in September 1984. It was finalized on August 7, 1985. Moore was then engaged to actor Emilio Estevez, with whom she co-starred in Wisdom, a crime drama he also wrote and directed. The pair planned to marry in December 1986, but called off the engagement. On November 21, 1987, Moore married her second husband, actor Bruce Willis. She and Willis have three daughters together. Rumor Glenn Willis, born August 16, 1988, Scout LaRue Willis, born July 20, 1991, and Tallulah Bell Willis, born February 3, 1994. They announced their separation on June 24, 1998, and filed for divorce on October 18, 2000. Moore had a three-year relationship with martial arts instructor Oliver Whitcomb, whom she dated from 1999 to 2002. In 2003, Moore began dating actor Ashton Kutcher, who is 15 years her junior. Soon after they began dating Moore became pregnant at the age of 42 and then lost her child almost six months into the pregnancy. They married on September 24, 2005. The wedding was attended by about 150 close friends and family of the couple, including Willis. In November 2011, after months of media speculation about the state of the couple's marriage, Moore announced her decision to end her marriage to Kutcher. After over a year of separation, Kutcher filed for divorce from Moore on December 21, 2012, in Los Angeles Superior Court, citing irreconcilable differences. Moore filed her response papers in March 2013, requesting spousal support and payment of legal fees from Kutcher. On November 26, 2013, their divorce was finalized. Interests. She was at one point a follower of Philip Berg's Kabbalah Center religion, and initiated Kutcher into the faith, having said that she didn't grow up Jewish, but would say that she has been more exposed to the deeper meanings of particular rituals than any of her friends that did. She is no longer affiliated with Berg's organization. According to the New York Times, Moore is the world's most high-profile doll collector, and among her favorites is the Jean Marshall fashion doll. At one point, Moore kept a separate residence to house her 2,000 dolls. While she appeared on PETA's worst-dressed list in 2009 for wearing fur, two years later she supported the group's efforts to ban circus workers' use of bullhooks on elephants. Awards and nominations Moore is the recipient of many accolades, including nominations for a Critics' Choice Award, two Golden Globe Awards, a Primetime Emmy Award and a Screen Actors Guild Award. This audio uses material from the Wikipedia article Demi Moore n.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash Demi underscore Moore which is released under the license Creative Commons. Attribution share alike 3.0 unported. CC by SA 3.0 creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by SA slash 3.0.